All right, so today we're focusing on the pecan, specifically pecans cooked and seasoned by a company based out of Shreveport, Louisiana, aptly named the Louisiana Pecan Company. And joining David and I is Cecilia to talk about her family's business, her plans as an eminent graduate from LSU, and how she sees the future for the company and the products they make. Okay. Right after college, you know, I'm probably gonna move back here and I'll be just working for Louisiana Pecan Company and I'll be, you know, doing their social media, you know, their public relations aspect, reaching out. And then also if like, I need to be that spokesperson, I will. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So so right now, um, the, the 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 company is is it is it relatively new or is it something that's been around it is yeah we actually started in october that's, oh, that's yeah, like so. when we first got oh, it wow. in the store <laughs> yeah okay wow. so it's very new okay so but, is is this been a, a like a family recipe that you guys have been using for a while and decided to turn this into a product what exactly happened was so my great 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 aunt pearl obviously she was born like the 1900s so she had this recipe for pecans. It's, you know, the smoky maple chili candy pecans, and that's like what we sell. Yep. Um, so she had this recipe for pecans. She would always make them. It was just passed down in our family. You know, my grandmother got it. My mom got it. And it was just always made at family occasions. So Thanksgiving, we'd have it. Christmas, Easter, any like big family occasion, we'd always have like the pecans. So, you know, they're always there. Yeah. And so, and sometimes, you know, we also package them, give them to friends, you know, just for Christmas gifts or good stocking stuffers, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. and so one of our family friends, he actually owns a local restaurant here. And he was like, you know, you like, you should really sell these. Like, they're so good. Everyone's, you know, we're always looking forward to them during Christmas time. And my dad, you know, he's the cook in the family. So he was like, yeah, like, let's just like cook <laughs> them up, you know, see, see what happens or whatever. So we got them in stores and people have been loving them. We've been going to different markets, different festivals, and selling them there. We've been selling out there, and so we're like, looks like we should make it into a company. Yeah, that's yeah. really how it could be. You guys just went to something last. Was it last weekend? Yes, it yeah. was a boutique day Noel. Yeah. So, so what was that about? Is that just kind of like a bunch of vendors get together and you know they specialize in Christmas? type gifts and you know they're looking to sell it's like local craft or or boutique yes. style businesses yeah exactly it's a market it happens every year around christmas time it's right after thanksgiving okay. like the first week of december normally um, it's just a bunch of local vendors local artists um and we all just you know go into the convention center and everyone all from all over Shreveport comes in. They're able to get Christmas gifts, stocking stuffers, that kind of thing. You know, unique gifts that like you can't just get off of, get offline. Yeah. That everyone can get. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What I was going to ask is, um, did y'all, so it started in October. Do you just go, uh, is it a, like a cottage kitchen or is it more of a upscale, uh, what do they call it? Like a commercial kitchen type of setup? I would say it's more of like, I mean, obviously it's very homemade, but it is upscale, you know, like all our mm -hmm. pecans are, you know, they're like processed and everything within the day. So they're all fresh. We coat them and everything that day. So like the day you get the pecans, they were coated that morning. So oh. it is upscale. They have that upscale flavor and everything. So I would say it's more of an upscale type deal, but you oh. know, we are doing it. Here. I was just asking because I, I ran a uh, cottage kitchen here in Mobile for about five mm -hmm. years doing pepper jelly. And I don't think I ever tried any like candied nuts or anything, but I know it's a, it's a tremendous effort to, to do that uh, on your own and try to uh, take into account the different orders and, mm -hmm. and then figure out how many you're going to need far enough in advance. And, and at least, but I guess the, uh, the good thing with pecans, especially candy pecans is they probably have a pretty good shelf life too. Yes, if they last maybe. that long, once people eat them. <laughs> um, yeah, I know. We try not to have a very long shelf life. We don't really keep much inventory. So we try to like, you know, each day it's, we're going to give them the fresh, the freshest ones that we can give. And normally like the ones that, you know, if we do have some that we don't sell, we just normally keep them and like we'll eat them ourselves, you know, give them to our family. Um, just obviously because yeah. we don't want our customers to have the old pecans. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's pretty fun. It does take a lot of effort, you know. Uh, obviously, I live in Baton Rouge for school, but, you know, my parents are always 
cooking everything, mm-hmm. unpackaging them all while I'm the one, you know, helping with inventory, helping with social media, taking pictures and that kind of stuff. So are you guys doing all the processing at home? Is that, is that what yes. we are like, you know, coding them and everything here. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause you're, you, I believe it was your father sent over the, the video here. This was yeah. all the, the, I don't know this was a single batch or whatever that you guys yeah. had. Um, yeah, that would be a single batch. That'll be a couple of batches, but you know, we obviously we do a bunch of batches at once just to speed up the process. Okay. Yeah. Right. Of course. And is yeah. this a, is this a fryer or is it, what is this contraption here that you're passing? Yeah, it's, on? A fryer. So it's a fryer. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I figured. I just had to mm-hmm. ask, you know, Sorry, David, yeah, I didn't mean to cover you up there. <laughs> that's all, hey, it's, I'd rather look at the pecans in my eye anyway. So. <laughs> but uh, so, okay, so you do you do that, and that, and that is a, a daily occurrence. So is mm-hmm. somebody packaging these up and carting them off to the post office every day? Yeah, and that's my mom. It's your mom. <laughs> yeah. Right so, my, uh, so my dad's the one that does primarily the cook cooking because yeah. obviously he loves cooking so he's the one that like coats them and everything my mom obviously she helps with that too but she's more over like packaging them weighing them putting the stickers on on them putting the labels on uh, making sure like the postmarks are on there right you know that kind of thing yeah so she's more over that but yeah i literally came home today i'd spent some time and they were doing work uh about 10 years ago and um became much more familiar and actually we had a hotel mm-hmm. near tiger stadium so it worked out for about six weeks. I got to explore a lot of the restaurants in the area. So yeah, uh, I found out Baton Rouge has a lot of good restaurants. Yeah, the food is top tier there. I will say, I think there's better restaurants in Baton Rouge than there are in Shreveport. I think Shreveport has started coming on. In the, well, I'd say in the last several years, but it's probably during your lifetime. Because um, I've seen a <laughs> lot of reports out of, out of Shreveport saying, you know, I guess you're getting the influx of the Southern Cajun Creole coming up that way that everybody associates with Louisiana, but Shreveport is definitely uh, a little different than, than the Southern part of the state. Oh, for sure. I know people down there, they're always like, Oh, like you're basically Arkansas. And I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> no, we try, but I will say like a lot of the food, you know, has migrated up here. We have local restaurants now opening that are Cajun based and Creole based, that kind of thing. So it's all, you know, it's all just coming together. And, you know, with our pecans, you know, it's an old family recipe. It has that Louisiana flavor and it has that spice, that smoky flavor that, you know, people love. Yeah. What it, well, I was going to say, I mean, obviously you don't, you're not smoking the pecans. You're, you're using probably some, I'm, I'm not going to ask, but I'm assuming <laughs> you type of uh, liquid seasoning, but Yes. No, but I mean, but your your point about pecans, and I loved uh, one of your dad's, uh, I think it was his charcuterie video, uh, mm-hmm. because he was talking about the history of the pecans, uh, or Louisiana history in pecans, mm-hmm. because, I mean, that's my favorite wood to, to smoke with, with like the pork mm-hmm. and stuff that I do, um, and when we make andouille sausage like they do in the river parishes, I always get uh, pecan wood, and uh, in fact, my parents had moved on a pecan orchard out here in uh, Alabama when we first... Uh, about 20 years ago. So, um, yeah, pecans have always been a, a big part of my, my personal history too. Mm-hmm. So I was going to say, that's how it was for me too. I just remember like in kindergarten, you know, you're like playing outside at recess and the pecans are all on the ground. You're like, Oh my God, let's pick up the pecans. Mm-hmm. So it's always just been kind of a thing. My family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You remember David, you remember mama had a pecan tree in the backyard, right? Yeah. That was a, I, I thought it was huge as a kid. I don't know how was. big it really was. I remember getting knocked in the head by those pecans falling off the tree. <laughs> That's probably what yeah, happened they, to me. Yeah, we satellite, had, whatever. We had to shell them though. That was the thing. That was yeah, well, busted up. Yeah, that's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, it is a little work. You know. So it, now th- you said that this is a this is an old old recipe that's been in the family for quite some time. So, uh, you know, I I of course I said some of the things that I, w- I wanted to talk to you about, but obviously with you guys just getting started, um, I can pretty much infer that this is, you know, this, this product right here, this is what you're focused on right now is getting, yeah. <laughs> getting us into as many people's hands as possible. Yes, for okay. sure. Yeah. So right now we just have the smoky maple chili candy pecans. Um, that's the only flavor we have right now. We're just going to keep focusing on that. And obviously, mm-hmm. Our goal is to grow bigger 
get into nation, like nationwide and everything into different states and cities. And like, once we do that, I think we'd like kind of brainstorm more different flavor ideas and like how we want to keep the pecans, but change the dynamic a little. Sure. That's a good idea. Yeah. So I noticed that you guys are on Amazon. Yes. That's got to be interesting as far as, you know, <laughs> direct sales to the consumers versus, you know, the way Amazon is and its craziness and everything. Um, do you see a lot of business through Amazon? We have. We've seen a, a good amount of business. A lot of it has been just through friends of friends, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, like it's an easy link to be like, okay, look, you know, go to Amazon, easy, prime. Right. But also, you know, it's a good way to just get the word out. It's a good way to reach people that have been like, oh, I want to try pecans, you know? Like, yeah. I don't, I, we don't have pecans here. Let's try pecans. You know, they're like, oh, Louisiana Pecan Company. Like, you know, let's try some pecans. Let's get them. So, yeah, yeah, that's really why we got on Amazon was just to spread the word. Sure. Get the order comes in through Amazon or through mm -hmm. other channels. That's all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're still sending it out ourselves. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was I thought it would be kind of funny if it was stocked at some warehouse up here in Seattle. No. <laughs> right yeah. near you, huh? Yeah. Yeah, We're right still here. doing it out of our own kitchen, out of our own house. It's still coming from Shreveport. Okay. Okay. I, I was going to say, I, I really like the name of the company because it reminds me of a, just a classic old style Louisiana product. Um, because, you know, when I first saw the, uh, I guess it was one of your dad's posts, I thought mm -hmm. it was like one that had been around a hundred years with a name like that. And even your, uh, your design on the box itself mm -hmm. is, you know, very classic in style. So, um, yeah, and that's what, uh, that's I think, what we're trying to for. Yeah. Really, you know, it's been a family recipe. It's been around for over, over a hundred years. And it's like, Hey, they are, you know, it is classic. It does have that old timey feel. They've always been in our family. Let's like incorporate that into our product mm -hmm. and like have people feel that sense of, you know, warmth and that sense of like tradition. Mm -hmm. You said it was your great, great, great aunt Pearl. Was she from Louisiana? Yeah, she was. She lived right here in Shreveport. My grandpa, my grandparents still live where they lived. Yeah. They lived here in Shreveport. They had a farm. Um, they had a bunch of chickens, a bunch of cows, horses, anything you can literally think of. And they were like, um, distributors in Shreveport before, you know, grocery right. stores became a thing. Yeah. So other than just eating the, the pecans as like a snack or uh, uh, on a charcuterie board, what are some other ways that y'all have tried uh, serving them? So besides those two things, a lot of people like to put them, you know, on ice cream, like that kind of thing, which I've had. And that's like my favorite way to have them because I'm a big sweet eater. And then we've also seen them on like sweet potatoes or, you know, vegetables, like Thanksgiving dishes, that kind of thing. Um, and then also you see them on pies, you know, pecan pie, obviously yeah. that's a big national pie that people love. Um, yeah. and so obviously we're hoping to get them on a pie someday. But yeah, yeah. Those are just other ways you can use them. Hmm. In your background, it looks like you got them on a salad or something. Yeah. Yeah. You can literally put them on anything. Sorry. This. Yeah. Right up here. <laughs> here. Yeah. This way. Yeah, it's the, it's the reverse of what you're thinking. It's the reverse, yeah. It takes a little while to get used to, but yeah. But yeah, you can literally put them on anything. I mean, I've yeah. seen people do it a million different ways. So I think it's one of those things where you can use your creativity, see what you like it with, and then just go from there. Yeah, yeah, because I was thinking when you said the sweet potatoes, mm -hmm. I've had a sweet potato, uh, not just the sweet potatoes, but it's like a souffle. That's supposed oh, okay. to be a side dish here. It's at a, a restaurant called... Um, I think it's called half shell which i think is out of mississippi originally mm -hmm. and they do this sweet potato souffle and it's got like a crunchy praline mm -hmm. uh topping and what i believe it is re in reality is it's just the crushed up pecans but it's like a, it's more of a it's really more one of those things it's more of a dessert than it is a side dish to go with your seafood mm -hmm. um so i can imagine that would be a good kind of combination to put that on something like that no, i still yeah. need to find a recipe for that <laughs> no, it's good. I know we always have sweet potatoes at Thanksgiving. And so that's one of the things we put them on is pecans are always, you know, pecan marshmallows, always in the sweet potatoes. And that just really enhances the flavor in my opinion. Yeah. The, the pecans are one of those things you don't really develop an appreciation for until you're removed from them. Mm -hmm. 
and <laughs> uh, moving out to the West Coast and then all the way up to Seattle over the past 20 years or so, I've gotten further and further away from them. And I can get pecans at Costco, but they're not the same. They're just yeah. not. My, my big struggle right now is uh, people, <laughs> this is going to sound petty, but people pronouncing it incorrectly. Um, <laughs> and that's why I put the thumbnail as I did for, for the show is it's, it's pecan bro, because uh, it, <laughs> I, people still call it pecans and I just want to, yeah. I want to throttle them. Um, and it's, it's the same people that say crayfish instead of crawfish, you know, mm -hmm. it's the, it's that kind of thing. And those people who prefer old Bay seasoning to Tony Sacheres or something like that. Um, exactly. it, yeah, it's, it, it, part of David and I's mission is to really get people to uh, appreciate Louisiana, not just for the food, but for the culture and the history of the state. Yeah. And one of those things is understanding and honoring the traditions of, of the state and, the, and, the, and the, the, the types of things. You know, you talk about your family. Of course, David has his family. I've got my family. And it's uh, w when we were growing up, when David and I were younger, we, we had huge family get togethers up on the North shore and, uh, and even down at our grandmother's house in Metairie, you know, that, that the specialness of that is something that's lost on people once they are, well, if they don't grow up in Louisiana, that's one thing, but, uh, mm -hmm. but then, you know, just the people that they don't get it, they, they just don't, they don't understand it. And it's, it's a different world out where, where I am. It's a different world. Mm -hmm. it's, it's an ongoing struggle to mm -hmm. get people to appreciate those things. And then, you know, there's, you know, people think all Cajun food spicy and, you know, it's, it's yeah. just all kinds of preconceived mm -hmm. notions about what Louisiana food should be. So mm -hmm. it's great that you guys are tackling this because this is yet another product from Louisiana that is very special it's near and dear to my heart and uh and I, I hope more and more people get a chance to try this but yeah i completely agree you know i um i was i moved to new york over the summer for an internship and it was one of those things where it's like oh i can't just go and get you know chicken pot pie like they don't have that there. you know like right. or um or even like the pecans like i'm like oh i want something sweet you know i want like a crunchy flavor mm -hmm. i want something sweet. Like i can't just go and get that you know so it's one of those things you definitely realize it's more of a family tradition and um it's more of it's very unique to louisiana yeah um, and so that's what i really love about our company is that we're trying to incorporate that and incorporate like how this can be used into like special memories for your family and, like those special moments like thanksgiving and christmas and you know other holidays yeah i was going to say the other thing too uh as jeremy was pointing out and and I was excited when we found out about y'all because of the fact that the, uh, you know, a lot of times Louisiana food is focused on New Orleans or Cajun country, mm -hmm. and which is what, you know, most of our experience, because that's where our, a lot of our ancestry is from. But, mm -hmm. you know, people forget about, you know, you get outside of that environs and you got good meat pies up in Natchitoches and, uh, and then you got, you know, the whole thing of North Louisiana, like you said, that people don't really appreciate or know, but that's part of the state. Mm -hmm. So um, to learn about what's uh, a, a native food, if you want to call it, maybe not native, but, an, uh, you know, a, a favorite recipe up there, because it mm -hmm. sounds like uh, your great, great aunt was making that for a while. It influenced a lot of people, got into a lot of people's lives. So even if they didn't actually have something like that, I'm sure they might have had something similar in their families too, or similar traditions. And so, yeah, and like, you know, pecans are one of those things where it's like, wow, Shreveport really, you know, they're the ones that are producing this. And they're the ones that are bringing something new. So that's what we really love about it. And that's what we're just really hoping to accomplish. Well, you know, the, yeah. the other thing too is uh, hopefully as you grow, you can, you'll get some more uh, exposure into places like the, uh, some of the culinary magazines through the state. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Louisiana yeah. cooking, and Louisiana mm -hmm. Kitchen Culture, they do a lot of good, uh, do a good job of trying to go beyond just uh, South Louisiana. And um, and then I've met a few people over the years that uh, are on certain media channels that they cover uh, all of Louisiana, even though primarily they kind of focus some on the South. But uh, that's how I learned about more of the things going up in Shreveport as well. Yeah, we're um, going to Lafayette next week. 
Um, we'll be doing a little market there. And okay. we're also doing a little market here in Shreveport again this week. So, so just trying to get the word out there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, so for anybody that's going to be watching this, you know, immediately after the broadcast, they can go, obviously, like we said, they can go to Amazon um, and we'll provide links to that on uh on the description of the inside youtube is there any other way that they can find the products is it like a website or someplace where they can go and learn a little bit more about the company too yeah for sure so they can go into louisiana pecan company all our histories on the website okay. um, louisianapecancompany.com they can also buy through that website also but they'll be able to learn about the history learn about how exactly you know where the cons come from, that kind of deal. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, if you want to go check out our Instagram, they can always DM us. We're going to respond back. And then also, um, if they're anywhere in Shreveport or they're around Shreveport, we're selling them in Honey Baked Hams, Fairfield Market, Bergeron's, just some other local restaurants here. And if they're ever, you know, stopping by, they can go into there, get a sandwich, grab some pecans. So hopefully one day I'll be going through the stores and the rouses and stuff around uh, <laughs> the North Shore and maybe I'll see them on the shelves too. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's the goal. So hopefully one day. Yeah, All right on. Well, I think we should uh, we should probably wrap this with uh, her commercial debut. What do you think? Oh, yeah. David? All right. <laughs> Let's get that going. Meet Sarah in the throes hmm. of holiday planning. What to have for holiday festivities? Something that is fantastically delicious. The usual fare just won't do. Time for a holiday culinary adventure. Of course, a charcuterie board. But how to elevate it from ordinary to extraordinary. What's the secret to transforming good to fantastically delicious? Ah, uh, yes. Louisiana Pecan Company's Smoky Maple Chili Candies Pecans, the hero of our holiday story. Just like that, the board goes from mere appetizer to a festive masterpiece. A holiday charcuterie board made fantastically delicious. It's not just a charcuterie board. It's a holiday sensation, thanks to a little pecan magic. Holiday hosting? Nailed it. Transform your holiday gatherings into fantastically delicious feasts with Louisiana Pecan Company. Very good. <laughs> I would say that's not too bad. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> who, who narrated that, by the way? Um, It was one of my dad's friends based okay. in New York. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> was like very authoritarian voice. I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because I watched it after I, your dad had sent the other stuff, and I found, either found that on YouTube, and I said, "Sarah, I said, wait a second, oh Cecilia, oh, okay." <laughs> it's, it's a gig, man. It's a gig. Yeah, I understand that now. She was convincing to Sarah. That's yeah. the thing about it. Well, <laughs> I'm glad I convinced y'all. <laughs> uh, well, great. But, um, thank you so much for you know spending time with us and talking about the products um we're really excited for you i love seeing family businesses kind of grow up really yeah. out of out of just an idea and you know mm -hmm. taking something that uh that the whole benefit the whole family can benefit from obviously the customers will enjoy too so um i yeah. i definitely wish you know you and your family the best of luck and and I hope that um, you guys just nail it, man. And I'm sure you will. I, I, you know, you've got you've got some young blood at the helm here. So at yeah. least from the PR standpoint, so um, got yeah. lots of energy. Sure. Thank you all so much for inviting us today. We Absolutely. really appreciate Thank it. You. Yeah, for sure. We'll be in touch. Thank you all so much. It was all so right. good meeting you. All right. All right. Y'all have care. a great Christmas and all. Yeah, you Thank say you. have a great Christmas. Y'all too. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Okay, so we should, we should probably <laughs> eat some of these things, huh? Yeah. All right. I got to get my knife out. Yeah, see, I, I came prepared. Oh, man, you got a... Uh, I just got this little... <laughs> Show off. <laughs> Actually, I carry, I carry two knives. When I started working in the chemical plants, they said, you need a knife. You know, cut tomatoes and do tomato sandwiches and such. <laughs> so. Of course, why not? 
Yeah. Okay, so this was uh, packaged by her mom, by Cecilia's mom, apparently. So yeah. this is uh, here. Let me uh, do the table reveal here. So here's the pecan box. All right, so this is uh, four yeah. ounces of pecans, which um, may not seem like a whole lot, but actually this is good for... I would say a couple of salads at least. Oh yeah, definitely for now, a single charcuterie plate, you know. Yeah, and I right. think that the um, the other part to note is they do offer a a twelve ounce size too yes. that I saw. So yes, they do. Four ounce and twelve ounce. Yep. So okay, well let's see here. Unwrap the. Uh... Yeah, I got to do that. This little gold tie wrap here. So I love the I love it when businesses just get started because they it's all the little details that they focus on yeah. to make the product stand out. And um that's really cool about this. Oh yeah, I was sniffing mine. Yeah, I mean that's a solid flavor there. I mean you can get the pecan flavor, yeah. definitely get the the smokiness. smokiness. Oh, I got the chili on the end there too. You did? Yeah. That's I like that. So it's not it's not overly uh heavily sweet or candied in that respect. No. no. Um it seems almost subtle, but yet you can taste like Jeremy said, you can taste the roasted pecan first to me. And then you get the sweetness. And then about midway, I start getting the smokiness. Yep. And then I guess when it finishes, I that's when I really notice the chili. The, chili, the chili's yeah. not not hot, not pepper no. chili. It's it's chili flavor. Yeah. Yeah, this is um, what I like about the flavoring is that it's not it's not overwhelming. It's mm -hmm. um, it's complementary to the nut flavor itself, right? Yeah. Um, and it may sound strange on my end. I'm tasting almost like bacon. I don't think there's any. No, I mean, we often associate you know bacon with smoked flavors. You know, I was talking about doing the you know the beignets like when we did the. The praline sauce. If we had done mm -hmm. the praline sauce with something like this in there, just kind yeah. of chopped. Yeah. I could see that being really good. Or or you put the praline sauce on it and then you just kind of strategically place these around yeah. the beignet. Like that that uh sweet potato souffle I was telling her about. Yeah. I mean, I could definitely see that on there complementing that and that would really be good on that and mm -hmm. and then the same thing with the salad because when she was talking about it since we hadn't tasted it i was thinking some type of salad where you might have like a <clears throat> i don't know maybe some type of balsamic vinegar <clears throat> but then maybe some blue cheese i like blue cheese i don't know if you like blue cheese i do love it love it so i, I could see it with some blue cheese Balsamic, kind of the darker greens, you know, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't know what uh, I, I don't need a lot of greens. Uh, <laughs> spinaches and spinach. Uh, yeah, I think romaines. Yeah, I think yeah. a spinach because spinach has that almost like velvety texture to it. Yeah. Um, with blue exactly. cheese and then the 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 pecans on that, and yeah, yeah and then some kind of complimentary dressing to go along with this would be well yeah. we're going to see the recipe apparently um and if they've got a recipe and they don't mind us publishing it i'm i'll put yeah. it on the website for sure i may have to get some more pecans uh, by that time <laughs> <laughs> well i definitely would uh would order more of these yeah. know, or, or order them i guess um the uh and i mean the point too about them on a charcuterie board definitely would be and, and I can see it on pecan pie too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Even in pralines, 
that was one of the things when you were talking about pecans and pecans and yeah i say praline and the missus says praline and i'm like praline baby nails on a chalkboard <laughs> yeah yeah well we'll uh, forgive her because she's german zons so. <laughs> yeah, yeah but um yeah i have to forgive her <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, no, I digress. Uh, <laughs> I probably would deserve it too. Um, so if they've got a flavor and a product that is totally independent of anything that, because I don't think I've, I've tasted like the things that we talked about, like with the, the Worcestershire and mm-hmm. the um, maybe just the salted roasted or the buttered. But to me, this is just totally something I hadn't, I hadn't had. And I can also see how that'd be good on ice cream, like she said. Yeah. See it really being good. Well, I mean, you know, you do your um, some kind of bluebell flavor that would pair up nicely with this. Yeah. 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 Like a like a butter pecan flavoring. Yeah. And then you put this on there, so you have some yeah. texture from it. I was good. This is a, this is a great product. And again, you know, it's just something that I'm 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 thrilled that to see uh, uh, yet, yet another Louisiana family get involved in yeah. you know taking their ideas and making a business but you know so, sometimes I, I don't think Louisiana is given enough credit for some of the innovative products that come out of it and I was going to say too that <clears throat> the because uh, I can't remember what the from the standpoint of pricing and that's going to change from you know when I did my uh, pepper jellies Mm-hmm. I was charging at the time for a, a pint jar, $6 a jar. And I had a guy reach out to me and he's like, man, I can get all kind of, uh, uh, I'll just call it Tabasco brand, which is a great brand mm-hmm. of pepper jelly for, you know, I can get three jars of that for what I'm getting yours. Well, yeah, I'm not making it at mass quantities. And so you're getting a handmade boutique right. uh, pro- uh, product. So, you know, that's the thing to say about, you know, if people are expecting to get and nuts in general. People don't realize is that they are, uh, they're not cheap. Right. So, you know, so the, uh, <clears throat> a product like this to me is good quality and good on a high end type of thing too. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so what people really need to realize is this is going to be a, a handcrafted product it tastes handcrafted yes, and, it does. and it's not, you know, it's not just an assembly line somewhere. Yeah. Well, yeah. well it is, it's just, you know, three family members. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <clears throat> it's a small assembly it's line. It's a small assembly <laughs> line, but yeah, I mean, I yeah. you know, more power to them. I hope they do great. Yeah. I hope it, I hope it becomes something where people <clears throat> from Shreveport as they in generations, as they move out, it's one of those things like we have our special coffees or our special right. things that we've got to have that keep us tied to home. You know, hopefully that'll be something that'll be, you know, Shreveport natives and all will will look forward to having on their shelves yeah. in the future. Well, I mean, you know, like she said, they're going down the Lafayette this weekend or yeah, this weekend, next weekend. Uh, but they're going to be, you know, they're trying to get down in the southern part of the state too. Great. Just absolutely great. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, all right, cool. Well, um, you up for a little uh, post show chit chat? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Cool. All right. All that's fine. Well, all right, guys. We'll be back in uh, in a few, and uh, we'll do our uh, our post uh, show chat. And um, we actually have uh, some uh, some family uh, history to share. Um, so, if you're interested in that, um, we're gonna we're gonna put some. Uh, well, David, in in doing what he does very very well, he has a lot of history around our uh, grandmother who would have been uh, was 113 this week. Yeah, yes, yeah, this week, uh, December seventh. Yeah. Yep, we're going to talk about her and and a bit of history about what I remember of her and what David remembers of her, and you know, just kind of kick back and ramble on. Reminisce. Yeah, reminisce. There you go. <laughs> there you go. All right. Um, all, all right, right, David. Well, I'll see you in a little bit. Okay. Sounds good. All right.